This is Faith in Action, the program that looks at how people put their faith into action in their everyday lives. Faith in Action is a production of Catholic Radio Indy. Now here's today's program. This is Faith in Action on Catholic Radio. I'm Jim Ganley. Our co-host is Bridget Eyre. Hello. Great to be with you. And you plan on using Amazon. Uh, here's something. Here's a way you could help us. If you go to our website, catholicradioindy.org, and click on the Amazon Smile logo. It's over on the right-hand side. If you click on that, you'll go to the Amazon site. They're going to ask you what charity you would like to support. And if you put all three words in there, Catholic Radio Indy, Catholic Radio Indy, then every time you buy anything on Amazon, we'll get a small percentage of the cost. It doesn't cost you anything. They don't add it to your cost. Uh, you shop on the very same Amazon as everybody else. Uh, but we get a small percentage of it. So if you can help us out that way, it's um, Catholic Radio Indy, and you can start at our website, catholicradioindy.org, and click on the Amazon Smile logo over on the right-hand side, and uh, you'll be helping us out a whole bunch. Well, I'm really excited about today's show because we're going to be talking about being a faith-filled Christian woman in a modern world. And boy, what a challenge that is. And joining us today is our guest, author, and many, many other, and many, many other hats, Kimberly Hahn, who has a new radio show coming up called Beloved and Blessed with Kimberly Hahn. So, Kimberly, welcome to Faith in Action. Thank you so much, Bridget. Great to be with you and Jim today. Well, I obviously knew of Kimberly Hahn because I, many of our people in our audience are familiar with your husband, Scott Hahn, the yeah. heavyweight. So, but I didn't really want to introduce you to that because, you know, you're going to, you're your own person and, um, <laughs> and you do a lot of things. So tell us a little bit about, well, well Kimberly's going to be on the radio. Yes. Uh, starting, uh, the, January 3rd, so, January 3rd, right, right after the first of the year. And pretty soon people will be saying, Scott who? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> they'll, be, they'll be introducing Scott as um, Kimberly's, um, Kimberly's uh, you know, spouse. So, uh, Kimberly, give us a little bit about your background for maybe anyone who may have not heard of you, maybe your family, and your conversion to the Catholic Church. Sure. So, um, my dad is a Presbyterian pastor, and I was raised in a beautiful uh, Christian home, an evangelical Christian home. Uh, my mom and dad prayed for me every day, and I can tell you they've already prayed for me today. They're both still living. And they taught me about the Lord from little on, and I really can't remember any time that I didn't believe that God existed and that He loved me, and I was really cherished by Him. Um, I longed to really give everything to the Lord, and um, and so I met Scott Hahn at Grove City College, and his passion for Christ uh, drew me so much to him um, so that we we really sense the Lord's blessing on our marriage, um, a future marriage. And so uh, we got married right before going off to Gordon-Conwell Theological Seminary. Um, in seminary, he earned the three-year Master of Divinity degree. I earned the two-year Master of Arts and Theological Studies degree. And we left seminary with me newly pregnant with our first child and uh, his call to a pastorate in Virginia. And it just seemed like, you know, the clouds had just parted and, and all of my dreams of being a pastor's wife and, and serving alongside my husband were just coming true before my very eyes and having our first child. Um, the trouble is that Scott kept studying Scripture. <laughs> he kept... Um, challenging himself with what he was reading and learning, and he began to sense that um, certain certain pillars of the Reformation um, didn't hold up, um, that Scripture itself never taught, that Scripture alone is all that is needed, but in fact St. Paul binds his hearers to sacred tradition. Um, in, in First Thessalonians he says, um, you know, you are to obey what you have read, and what I have taught you. And so, and then he also was very challenged by the idea that Scripture, again, does not teach justification alone. And this is, you know, the, the supposed reason that Luther just couldn't stay in the Catholic Church, because Scripture taught justification by faith alone, but in fact the only Scripture that addresses 
justification and alone is James 2.24, where we are not justified by faith alone. And so it's faith working in love. Bottom line, it is all grace. It is the grace of God that justifies us. It is the grace of God that gives us what we need to be able to respond in obedience. So we don't say we have saved ourselves, and yet we can say with St. Paul, we are working out our salvation with fear and trembling. So we, you know, I I had memorized many verses. One of the verses I had memorized growing up was Ephesians 2, 8, and 9, about faith being a gift. And yet if you go on to verse 10, it says, so that we will walk in the good works that God has prepared beforehand, that we should walk in them. So we can't have this absolute separation between faith and works. Do you have to believe? Even believing is an act of obedience. And yet at the same time, it is faith working in love by the grace of God. And so Scott came to a very deep conviction about this in 1986. I, on the other hand, was now having my second baby, um, or actually had delivered my second baby. I was expecting my third baby. And I already had my Master of Arts in Theology. I I was in the position I wanted to be in as pastor's wife, and it was like, do not, do not do this. And it was a true death of dreams for me. And without having a consolation that I think Scott had in terms of being rooted and grounded in the church Jesus founded. Um, And it was in the baptism of our third child that I finally said to the Lord, I'm willing to risk trusting you to lead me in this course of study. Um, And I'm fast-forwarding a lot. If anyone wanted to read our journey, um, we have a book called Rome Sweet Home, um, where we go back and forth. Every chapter is the same time frame, so people can really walk through what that was for me. It was an absolute agony uh, to have my husband become Catholic and feel like the unity we had had just been... um, The rug just got pulled out, right? (laughs) Yeah, but... I can say at this point, I really believe that was the mercy of God, giving him a strength. I don't even know how he had to be able to follow Christ no matter what, and that enabled me then to come into the Church in 1990 in my own conviction, you know, not because um, I had to follow Scott, but because I had to follow Christ and the Lord opened my heart to the truths of the Catholic faith, and I just am so grateful to God for all of that. Um, but it was challenging. We're talking with Kimberly Hahn. She is the wife of Scott Hahn. She's also a city councilwoman in the city of Steubenville, um, mother of six, grandmother of 19, just to get all that in there, and you're also an author. I want to, I want to get into... Um, what does it mean to be a faith-filled Christian woman today? What does it mean, just in, just in a in a, in a short nugget, I guess? We'll get we'll yeah. get into more depth of that, but just yeah, yeah. I I I think it means that we recognize God is the one who made us and who has redeemed us, and so we owe Him everything. He is not looking for us to be able to check a box that we've gone to Mass or that we've prayed a rosary. Um, it's, there's, there isn't a list of what we're supposed to do. What he's saying is, you are my chosen and cherished daughter and son, and I want all of you. I am giving you all of me, and I'm asking all of you. And so the idea that we have Jesus as Savior, but maybe not necessarily as Lord, is just not true. We are to give him all of our heart, all of our mind, all of our strength, all of our soul. And, of course, we never give up ourselves without getting ourselves back, but in a whole new way and a new understanding. Um, you can't outgive God. And Jesus didn't withhold anything when he went to the cross for our salvation. And so we acknowledge him as Lord. We acknowledge the Church as his gift, his Mother as his gift. Uh, the sacraments as his gifts, and we receive it all, and then each day we begin the day saying, all of me for all of you. I bet there's listeners right now thinking, wow, uh, we need to hear more of that, (laughs) and that's exactly what's going to happen. Uh, Kimberly is going to be hosting a new program 
on EWTN shortly after the first of the year. Can you tell us a little bit more about that program, Kimberly? Yes. So I'm going to be able to um, lead a Bible study uh, based off of Proverbs 31. Um, Part of the show will be that Bible study. Part of it will be um, looking at some of the married saints that we have in the Church. I've been studying up and reading, and Magnificat is assisting me in some of the write-ups that their uh, author has done. There are more than 120 that I have found so far, believe it or not. Um, And so we want to look at ways they are models for us, older brothers and sisters in Christ who've gone before us in this vocation of marriage. We will look at um, at some questions from listeners uh, from really all over the world. And I have a brief section called Moments with My Mom. And my mom is one of those mentors for me still uh, at 87 years of age. She is a godly woman, and we talk about some of these um, very important elements of being a wife and mom. And so I'm going to get to share some of her wisdom with our various listeners. Well, when we choose to love our children for the good of their lives, um, how does that change, maybe change our culture or change our perspective? Well, let me answer it two ways. Sure. First, how, how, do, we, um, how do we embrace this vocation of being a, a wife and a mother more deeply? And I want to go back to that start of the day. I really believe that as Catholics, we talk about ongoing conversion, which means each day we're to choose Christ, and we're to, um, uh, in a sense, do that morning offering of of giving the whole day to Christ. I want to challenge all of us to choose our spouse at the same time. That may sound strange. Of course I choose my spouse. I'm I'm still married. Mm -hmm. But I think it needs to be an act of the will at the beginning of the day that you say to the Lord, thank you for that man. Thank you for that woman. Thank you that you have given us this covenant of marriage. Please be the Lord of our marriage in new ways today. And then I want to challenge our listeners, go through your children and choose your child each day. Set your heart in love for each child. We have conflicts with some children because they're just like us. And we have (laughs) conflicts with children because they're not at all like us. And if we begin the day... Um, especially if one of them has been the start of the day. Mm. We could be knocked off balance. And I want. I think that it is so important. I, in fact, I would say for those of us with married children, choose your in-law today. Um, choose your grandchildren today and bring them before the throne of mercy because these are gifts that God has given you. You know, the only relationship that you will ever choose is your spouse your parents, your siblings, your nieces and nephews, your children and grandchildren and in-laws, you do not choose those. But God has chosen those relationships, and it's all meant to bring you closer to Him. So thank God for each one at the beginning of the day, and ask Him to help you set your heart in love to extend grace to each one. That's how we change the world. You know, Uh, Mother Teresa of Calcutta said, if you want to change the world, go home and love your family. It's easy to go out into the world and find some people who are just like you, and you just love those people, (laughs) and you feel so good about yourself, and then you go home and you bark at your spouse and you're unkind to your children, but you know what? You you went out and you helped the poor today. Well, guess what? (laughs) The poor may be in your home. How do you tuck that child in at night? How do you greet that child coming back in the door from a, a hectic day at school? How do you greet your spouse who's not sure if his job's going to still be there tomorrow? This is the center of where we change our world. One woman, young woman from high school, when Scott was teaching high school years and years ago, back in Virginia, came over, and she was real intrigued by politics. We lived in the D.C. area, and of course, you know, it was kind of on people's minds. Mm -hmm. And she said, aren't you frustrated you were being home with a baby all day? I said, do you know what I do? I change culture, diaper by diaper. I believe that. Amen. And charity begins at home. That's that's the message that I always got from my parents, and you're really affirming that. This is great stuff, Kimberly. We need to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to talk more about being a Christian woman. 
You're listening to Catholic Radio Indy, converting the culture to Christ through radio, featuring 100% Catholic programming 24-7. Do your friends a favor. Tell them about Catholic Radio Indy. Alexa, what's the weather forecast for today? Alexa, what time is the Colts game today? Alexa, remind me to pick up the dry cleaning tomorrow. Has Alexa become a part of your daily routine? Then make sure that routine includes Alexa, play Catholic Radio Indy. Catholic Radio Indy. Quick, easy access to Catholic programming 24-7. Just say, Alexa, play Catholic Radio Indy. Catholic Radio Indy. Welcome back to Faith in Action. I'm Bridget Ayer. Jim Ganley and I are in the studio, and we're talking with our guest, Kimberly Hahn. And we're talking about being a faith-filled Christian woman today in a modern world. And Kimberly, I want to ask you about um, discouragement. Um, there's a lot going on, you know, in our culture, on TV, in the media, social media. Um, how can women, I guess, stay focused on the positive and, and being loving in our families? Well, certainly prayer is one very crucial aspect, and we've already talked some about that. I think, secondly, it is sacred scripture, and knowing that the Holy Spirit has led writers to give us, according to the Catechism, the, the words of God in the words of men. And so these are, these are God's, the, God the Father speaking to our hearts, um, and it's just amazing. I mean, you, if you read through the Psalms, you will see every possible emotion expressed. Um, and, and in the Catholic Church, because we have morning and evening prayer and we have Mass, we hear so much Scripture every day. And so I would really encourage our listeners to open their hearts to the Holy Spirit and say, please speak to me and give me direction today. I want to share one specific Scripture. You know, when Jeremiah was writing, he was writing to the people of Israel who were um, in, um, they were facing exile. I mean, we're not facing exile at this moment in our history. They were facing exile. And then he leads into, and I, I just want to read verse 10 before verse 11, because I think 11 is familiar. People don't understand the context. Number 10, sorry, sorry Jeremiah twenty nine ten. For thus says the Lord, when 70 years are completed for Babylon, that 70-year exile, I will visit you, and I will fulfill to you my promise and bring you back to this place. And here's the crucial verse, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. Many people are struggling at different levels. Mm -hmm. Older people are struggling. Will I... Will I survive this pandemic? Mm -hmm. Will I? Will my spouse survive this pandemic, or will I go on alone as a widow or widower? Families who are wondering, if I send my children to school, am I risking what's going to happen to my children? People are homeschooling, wondering if people will take away that right to homeschool because they're so interested in consolidating power in the schools. People who are um, able to have children, should I be open to life right now? Is, can I... Can I have a child? And I think that the Lord wants to speak to our heart and say, Remember who is the Lord. I am the Lord your God. I've brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the, out of the house of bondage and slavery and sin. I am giving you my spirit. Trust me. Trust me. We need to obey the Lord because he alone knows the future. In Proverbs 31, it actually says, that the woman laughs at the time to come. Now, either she is ignorant and silly, and she just isn't thinking about the future, or she knows, I don't know the future, but I know the one who knows the future. He is the one in whom we put our confidence. Not a single politician, not a congressman or senator, not even our wonderful country of the United States of America. Our confidence is in the Lord. And we obey him because he is the Lord, not because it's safe enough to go ahead and risk getting married or having a child or um, leading our family uh, in worship. Um, and along with this, I think it, I, I, the scripture that comes to my heart so frequently 
comes from Philippians. Philippians 4, 6, and 7 says this, Have no anxiety about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, and here's the critical phrase, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. We have concerns. We have so many concerns. We, we can do something with them. We can come before the throne of grace. We can come before the very presence of Jesus. And I urge people, come before the Blessed Sacrament. Come early before Mass to bring your heart and bear your heart to Him. Tell Him your fears. Tell Him your concerns. And then, with thanksgiving, lift those concerns into the lap of your Heavenly Father and know that as your beloved child, He sees you. He knows you. He hears you. He is with you. His peace will rule in your heart. We only have a couple minutes left here, but I want to ask you, you were talking about we can have faith in God in knowing him and, and what he is and who he is, but we also need to know who we are, who our identity is in Jesus, our identity as the daughters yes. of the king. Talk briefly about yes. that. Well, we get many conflicting messages from the world about what our worth is as a man or a woman. We hear, you know, it's based on our skills, our abilities, our mental acuity, our education, our career. And I, what I believe the Lord says initially to Israel in the Old Testament and then over and over through the words of the Gospel writers and St. Paul and, and others in the New Testament is, I am the one who is the source of your worth. I made you and I redeemed you. And I let me be the one who establishes who you are and, and what it is that I want you to do. Um, you know, when Mother Teresa of Calcutta, again, was St. Teresa of Calcutta, was challenged about, you know, how devastating the poverty was that she was trying to address in Calcutta and, and you know, was it making much of a difference, um, she said, you know, success is not... At the goal, it's faithfulness. It's faithfulness. Um, for those who've been given a position by the Lord to make a profound difference um, in politics, that's what they need to do for the honor and glory of God, and they need to honor Christ in what they do and the policies that they support. For those of us who don't have that particular position, it is enough to be faithful where we are, to love your toddler today to embrace your spouse today. And so it's faithfulness as a beloved son or daughter of the Most High, and he will lead us and guide us and show us the difference we can make today. I really love the title of your um, new radio show starting um, January 3rd. It's called Beloved and Blessed with Kimberly Hahn. Just give us a, a, just we got like three minutes left. Just give us a real quick recap of what you plan to do on the show. We're getting yeah. a good, we're getting a good sample of right now, and I'm really excited about <laughs> it. Thank you. Well, I, I want to open the scriptures, and, and so it begins with a Bible study, um, especially focused on the vocation of marriage. Um, and to give us more of a scriptural understanding of what we're being called to and how we can live that out in very nitty-gritty, practical ways. Um, we'll look at a different married saint um, in each show um, and how that is a reflection of, of some aspects of the vocation of marriage. Um, I want to challenge us to look for mentors, and um, I'll introduce my mom as one of my mentors, and then there'll be others um, who are mentors just uh, in the next stage of life um, so that we're being called on, and then we'll also answer questions of, of the various listeners. Now, the show is also going to be podcast, and how, how often is the show going to air? Do you know at this point? Is it going to be a daily, a weekly? What's the time frame? It'll be weekly. A weekly. It'll be once a week, 30 minutes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then the podcast is available at belovedandblessed.com. So www.belovedandblessed.com. 
Any yeah. any uh, final thoughts that you want to give our listeners in terms of encouragement? You've been really encouraging this morning. Any any scriptures that come to mind to, to encourage or one that you might want to repeat or share with us? Mm. Well, I would, I would recommend that people go back and reread Philippians 4, 6, and 7, that last passage uh, that I read, because I, I believe it's, it's very true. The spirit of fear is not a spirit from God, and yet our fears are understandable. So what do we do with them? We can either sit and let them stew in our stomach till we're, you know, not able to eat um, so that we're distracted and we're not able to do what we can do, which is love our, our spouse, our children, and those in our sphere of influence, or we bring those concerns to our Lord, knowing that He He holds all things in His hand, and He's at work. You know, this is the time that He has called us to be saints. And it's not enough to just wish that we lived in some other time under some other circumstance. Now is the time that we embrace him and his plan for our lives. And I'm so grateful for those of you at your radio station that have stepped up, donated, um, tuned in, because that's a part of God's plan. And, and what, a, what a wonderful resource that you have made available to people. Um, I hope people, you know, tap into it. And, and the resources are out there for God to strengthen us to be faithful to him in our vocation. Rada Tang, uh, our guest today has been Kimberly Hahn. You can um, hear her right here um, on Catholic Radio Indy. Uh, her show is Beloved and Blessed, and you can get uh, the podcast there at BelovedAndBlessed.com. Kimberly Hahn, thanks so much for being our guest today on Faith in Action. Thank you so much for Jim and Jim. Great to be with you. You have been listening to Faith in Action, the program that looks at how people put their faith into action in their everyday lives. Faith in Action is a presentation of Catholic Radio Indy. You can hear this episode of Faith in Action again or any past episode at catholicradioindy.org. If you have a suggestion for a guest or topic for a future program, please call us at 317-870-8400 or email jim at catholicradioindy.org.